Hello, today my half inch uh, chemical pump springs some leaks. So what we're gonna do today while we're waiting on this pump's parts to come in, we're gonna switch away from this pump and go over to an all flow 10 gallon a minute pump. As you can see, I hooked up the uh, poly hoses, half inch and the quarter inch air pipes to this pump and it's just running to my inlet tank. So we're going to compare this pump against a 12 volt fat boy pump. Let's see how it does, okay? Welcome back. So to tell you how we're going to do this, everything's going to be hooked up the same. Down there at the bottom, that's a cam connection that's going to hook into the cam connection of that air diaphragm pump and that's going to go all the way through a half inch tube feed tube into a um, dipstick down in the main water tank then it's going to come on the outlet side for 100 feet through the chemical hose to a standard poly nozzle uh, four gallon a minute zero zero tip which we'll show you when we get out there later and the pumps that we're going to be coming up against is basically this is the fat boy pump I think it's rated at seven gallons a minute about 80 psi or 60 psi I'm sorry it too is fed by a half inch going in just to a dipstick with a check valve on it the exact same and it's going to be hooked into the same hose via cam so the air diaphragm pump obviously here's a little quarter inch air hose and that's being driven by my um, wheelbarrow air compressor, which I showed you on another video. Uh, this pump is rated to run from 20 PSI to 100 PSI. We're going to set it at about 50 PSI. So theoretically, that's a 50 PSI, 10 gallon a minute air diaphragm pump versus a 7 gallon a minute at you know 70 or 80 psi or whatever these run at I think it's 70 or 80 and uh, we will find out just how much further they squirt to be fair once again the air diaphragm pump is rated at three gallons or two gallons more a minute and so we should get a little bit better anyways but I'm running it at a slightly lower psi than the electric pump so let's just see you know how that works out and I will get back with you welcome back here's the standard poly uh, spray gun that I'm going to use with the zero zero tip I'm going to be spraying from the edge of the parking lot right there and we're going to spray towards that cone which is about 40 feet away I'm over here in the shade right now so I can make sure that this is recording I apologize for the traffic but I'm on a busy highway at the shop so we're going to sit here the wind is actually at my back going that direction so we're gonna go from the edge here and see how far this goes kind of keep it level and see how far it goes towards that cone this is the electric pump so it's fairly level as you can see it probably goes maybe 30 feet so I can walk that out but I'm gonna put a cone there and then we're going to go inside and hook up the air diaphragm pump and stand in the same spot. So if I arc it a little bit, you know, I can get a little bit more out of it. But let's, you know, that's 30, 32 feet. Okay, you're getting some overspray past that, but where the main stuff is hitting, you can see it pretty good. The wind's blowing, like I said, at my back, kind of blowing it to the right a little bit. So let's stop that and go hook up the other pump and then we'll see how that works. I've switched out the leads now so you can see that the chemical the air diaphragm pumps now hooked up to the same hose out there. I've got to come around here start up the air compressor. It's going to get loud so I'm going to shut it off but when I get back outside it's loud enough for traffic. And I'll crank up the air compressor and I do I will have this gauge set at 50 psi and then we will fire up that gun and see how that works 
I gotta open this door too to get the carbon monoxide out. Don't try this at home. As you can see down here, I've got the uh, pressure gauge here for the output. And it's only it's not quite 50 pounds yet. So put that up just a little bit more. And now it's about not four bars, but right at about 50 psi. I put a second cone out there. That's the middle of where the first pump sprayed, the electric pump sprayed, and that other cone is still at the original spot. So I can run this up to 100 psi, but we're going to try it at 50. I'm going to kind of keep it level just like we did the other one. Let's see how much further it goes. I've got to get a little air out of line when I change the line. So at 50 psi, it's not quite as far, but it's putting out just a hair bit about the same. It's even less at 50 psi. So we're going to go uh, inside. You can see this is it's not quite as good as the electric pump. So let's go inside and change that psi up a little bit. See what happens. Back at the air compressor, we've now put that up to about 70 psi. So at 70 psi, we'll see how that works out. I might have to uh, actually put a little bit bigger air hose going through that, but it runs off a quarter inch. So, but that's a really long run. I got about 25 foot of air hose going through it. When it's actually installed, there'll only be about six foot air hose. Now, one nice thing is, is I don't have to worry about the pump running or not running, you know, like you do with the electric slamming on and off, and you don't need to have to have the accumulator tank, so that's pretty good. So here we are back, back here, we'll kind of put it the same. Now we're making a little difference. So, you know, if you look at it kind of level, now it's going past the other one about five feet on the main thing. Wind's picking up. Now, see the compressor here kicking in more? So it'll drop a little bit. When it drops down in pressure, it's about the same. The wind's even more blowing now, so it's going a little to the right more. But when the pressure drops down, it's about the same. But when the kick pump kicks in, you know, then it goes about five feet past it. So I'm gonna go crank it up to about 85 PSI. I don't wanna max it out, see what that does. Well, I just put the, uh, air regulator as high as it could go, which is only close to 80 PSI. Let's see if we get a little bit more uh, feet, so. Just give it a shot here. Kind of keep that all level. Good. So yeah. And if you keep it all kind of level there, Mark it up a little bit like I did maybe just a hair. So depending on how that wind's blowing it. Now, before the max on the other pump was right there where that pump is, or where that thing is. And on this one, the wind's really blowing now. We let the wind die down. But basically, when the wind's not blowing this hard, it's really picked up. You get about five more feet. Maybe if I get this up, see, see when the wind dies down, it gets out there. But anyways, if I could get this up to 85, 90 PSI, see, when you hear the pump go on, I don't know if you heard that, it went on and it shot farther, because you got more air, then it slowly drops down some. It's pulsating a little, because you're using up the air. Then it, but all in all, you know, this tip on this, this uh, 0040 tip, you know, that was recommended for the pump when I bought this system with the electric pumps. So, the air diaphragm pump, it's a cheap small air diaphragm pump. I didn't expect it to go as far as my half inch diaphragm pump, but it still gets five feet more than the other pump. So, five feet is five feet. Now, with all that being said, I can also you know, adjust that pump some with the size of airline and the, and the intake hose, but I wanted to uh, 
um, have the exact same hose, the same half inch hose that was feeding it. So I might be starving the pump a little bit because it is rated for two or three gallons more than the other pump. Is, is it as good as a half inch pump? Uh, it's not quite as good. The half inch pump would hit that second uh, cone over there and maybe a little bit further. So you'd probably get 39 feet, give or take. You know, right now you're getting about 35 feet. So you might get maybe 40 feet with the other one. It's hard to tell. Pulled out the tape measure just to uh, measure this for sure. So the electric pump here is right at about 35 feet, the middle of that spray. Now keep in mind on the electric pump, I've been using that so I have it, you know, kind of set. You know, I tweaked it a little bit, not a whole lot. And then the other one, the middle of the spray was just about right here, which is... Just a little over 40 foot, about 41 foot was the middle of this spray. So, you know, what is that? Five feet more, 41 and 35, about six feet more. So we're back here looking at the pumps and I want to summarize this up. The electric pumps, these Fat Boy pumps, this is upside down, but this is the Fat Boy series. You know, it's a 12 volt pump. You do need to buy batteries. You know, I believe, I want to say it puts out PSI 4.1 bar which is about 50 60 PSI okay and I believe it's yeah seven gallons a minute okay so it's held up pretty well I've got a couple backups you do have to get an accumulator so that your pressure switch doesn't go on and off and on and off it helps save the pump but I always anytime I put roof mix or house wash mix and I'm pumping that I always take the dipstick and put it in my buffer tank and then clean it right out and all the hose every time so it's lasted pretty good so you know this pump costs about 40 bucks less than the air diaphragm pump we just looked at it is prone to having replacement you know part problems and stuff and you have to charge batteries so that's a downside but it's performed pretty well it does as you can see shoot a little bit less volume of water so it went about five feet or so further maybe put out a gallon or more you know, and that may change a little bit because that poly gun out there, it was set up for these electric pumps, okay? I don't know if it'll make a big difference, probably not. So the upshot of all this is, this air diaphragm pump is way cheaper than a half inch pump. Of course, this will shoot 10 feet further and put another two gallons out. But if you're doing residential stuff, this will be fine. I'm actually getting another one so I could put two of them, you know, together. Uh, I can put smaller spray nozzles on there without, you know, making the pump cycle more hurting it because an air diaphragm pump has a little bit more give in it. That's a plus. Downside is you got to buy an air compressor. Now that particular air compressor was, you know, I had to get it because I wanted to drive this and I got it bigger to drive a three quarter or a one inch. Um, you don't need a, one that big for this pump. You know, this pump, maximum operating pressure is 20 to 100 PSI. And um, it doesn't say the gallons per minute, but I think it's 10 gallons. I, I'll put a link and you can look it up. Might have a little less maintenance. You know, that's, that's to be seen how long it holds up versus the other pump. So that's the comparison, guys. It's up to you. You know, do you want a, an electric pump and have to charge batteries and, and all that kind of stuff and carry backups? Or do you want to get two of these? You know, I don't know if you need a backup or not, to be quite honest, but... Or do you want to get one of these and have an air compressor and you never have to worry about electric or, or your, uh, you know, batteries? That's just a personal choice. You know, I use the air compressor for other things. I run a one-inch pump that I have in the other trailer. I run a three-quarter-inch pump. I was running that half-inch. You know, depending on which trailer I'm taking out. I like it because you can use it to fill tires and stuff. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really hope you enjoy them. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the comment section below. I'll be glad to answer it as soon as I can, or maybe one of my subs will. But remember, please hit that subscribe button that's going to pop up, and YouTube is going to put more videos for you to watch over here. So enjoy yourself, grab the popcorn, and just remember, we really appreciate you being part of our family and subscribing to our channel. All the support you give us has been wonderful. So have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.